Hello everybody, this is the Structures Guy, and today we're talking about the disappearing bridge of Orison. The Orison Strait splits the Danish island of Zeeland from the southern Swedish province of Scania for a long time. The construction of the rink started in 1995 and was completed in July 2000. The rink celebrated its 21st anniversary last July. The entire crossing costed about 4.5 billion US dollars or about 3.8 billion euros. When it opened in 2000, a total of 2.95 million vehicles crossed over. In 2019, that figure was 7.4 5 million vehicles with a total of 120 million vehicles crossing the bridge since it opened. The Orison Bridge connects Malmo at the bottom of Sweden's southwest coast to a region of Denmark near Copenhagen. The Orison Crossing project which crosses international shipping channels involved building a 4 km underwater tunnel, a 4 km artificial island which is called Pepperholm, and an 8 km bridge resulting in a total of 16 kilometers crossing. It has reduced the journey time between Denmark and Sweden to a 10 minute drive or a 10 minute high speed train journey. In terms of notable features of achievement for the bridge, the Orson Bridge is the longest combined road and train bridge in the entire European continent with a maximum span of 490 meters. The bridge has a total of 4 lanes of traffic, 2 per each direction for vehicle traffic and a total of 2 heavy rail tracks underneath them. The bridge has a total width of 30.5 meters of concrete deck and a total height of 203.5 meters with a shipping clearance of 57 meters for ships to pass below it. On the bridge, the railway and the motorway run on separate rivers with the railway on the lower level and the vehicle traffic on the upper deck but both traffics run next to each other on the main made island of Pepperholm and the underwater tunnel. You might be asking an important question now, why does the ring turn from being a bridge to an underwater tunnel. The reason for this is to prevent the strait from clogging up through ice floats in the winter. Also, engineers were worried that the height of the bridge would be an obstacle to landing and taking off planes from the Copenhagen International Airport that they decided to transition the bridge into an underwater tunnel. The crossing of the strait is completed by a 4 km underwater tunnel called the Drogden Tunnel from Pepperholm to the Danish island. The biggest issue in the design process was figuring out how to transition the structure from a bridge into a tunnel. There wasn't any land or point where this could be done easily, so engineers had to excavate the sea floor to build a massive artificial island where the tunnel could begin. That artificial island was created out of dirt and materials excavated for other parts of the project. In an aerial view, you can see that the island has a white crescent in the water. The island was the main transition point and the focal point for the entire transit system. The tunnel could not be drilled, rather the tunnel had to be pre-built into the island. The Orison Bridge is a cable stayed bridge. In this kind of bridge, a series of strong steel cables attach the bridge deck to high towers called pylons that support the weight of the bridge. The rail constraint kept engineers from going with a traditional suspension bridge which would have been too shaky for trains. Rather, they started on a cable state design which transfers the weight through multiple cables back to the main tower. The final fail safe in the design process was to leave each support tower completely unconnected from the other. This ensured that if a plane ever were to crash into one of the support towers, the other might be able to keep the structure from completely collapsing. In conclusion, the Orison crossing is a marvel of engineering and construction. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. See you next time!